Hello and welcome to Fat Boss TV. Alex here, and today we're having a look at the Stormheim invasion scenarios on the Legion Alpha. Now, before we go super deep into this, there are some big spoilers in this video, mainly relating to what happened on the Broken Shore. And although we don't really discuss them, they are kind of there in the video, and I can't stop them from being there. So be prepared. Now, after you finish your artifact weapon for any class, you are asked what zone you want to strike at first in the Broken Isles, and this will choose what zone you begin leveling in. Right now on the Alpha, you have a choice between High Mountain and Stormheim, and as Stormheim is the one with the awesome scenario, we're going to pick that one and have a look at it from both an Alliance and Horde perspective, as it does change depending on what faction you are. So let's have a look at the Horde version of events first. You start off by picking Stormheim on the map. It tells you that Sylvanas has assembled a fleet to go to Stormheim to locate the powerful artifact known as the Aegis of Agrimar. This is actually the shield that you use in the Halls of Valor on the second to last boss where you have to all hide behind it. So yeah, you have to go and get that artifact so you can use it against the Legion. You accept the quest and you are told to go to Dalaran to meet with Nathanos Brightcaller, the champion of the Banshee Queen. So you pop over to Dalaran and get given a letter. When you click the letter, Sylvanas speaks to you as you're kind of reading it, as if it's like her speaking in your head like the movies. I, well, either way, she tells you that as the new war chief, because Vol'jin is missing at the moment, so as the new war chief, she wants you to secure the future of the Horde and that you need to help her. She wants to go over to Stormheim and she lets you know that you'll have the full might of the Forsaken behind you. So you go through the portal and meet her in Duratar Harbour. When you teleport there and speak with her, she is supposed to escort you around the ship whilst you make the final preparations, but this isn't working just yet. So instead, you stand there as she tells you about getting the shield and how good the ship is. She tells you that she is never going to stop fighting until she gets what she wants, and it is all a little bit odd where she's like, oh, look how nice these cannons are, and she's just standing still, nowhere near the cannons, but it will be cleaned out after Alpha. But either way, you complete the quest and queue for the scenario. Upon entering the scenario, you find yourself amongst the entire Forsaken fleet upon Sylvanas' personal battleship. She tells you that the Alliance have attacked us with their giant sky fire sky ship in the air and that you need to repel them. So what you do, you then jump on a bat which will take you over to another ship. And what you're doing is to go over to a ship to use a catapult to shoot down some of these griffins. Now this bit is really really horrible the camera angle absolutely sucks on this catapult and with a ton of bats flying about at the same time it's really hard to see who is who not only that you have to shoot down 30 of them and your catapult projectile is curved making it very very irritating to actually try and predict where they're going to be so you can hit them now periodically an alliance battle mage will drop down and freeze your catapult what you need to do is jump out of your catapult because it no longer works. You need to kill the battle mage and then get back into your cannons. The battle mage itself doesn't really do too much. He's got a frost fire bolt that slows you a little bit. But either way, you finish her off. It's kind of like an economy version of the loot ship in ICC. Now, after eventually taking out 30 of these birds, Nathanos Brightcaller lets you know that we need to go to all of the other ships as they are getting decimated by parachuters. So you quickly jump on the bat and start your journey over to the other ship. Once you land on the Brightcaller, you'll find a bunch of human bastards that you need to take out. These guys aren't too difficult to deal with, but you do need to be careful of projectiles landing on the ship as they will deal damage to you. So it's very important that as you're fighting them, you're moving out of these giant swirly circles that are coming down, just so you don't take this extra damage. After you've cleared out the ship, a captain will arrive. He really is very, very easy to deal with. He does like practically nothing. I'm surprised that he's kind of in there. He's just a guy with more health. So you quickly take him out and move on to the next ship. Now this ship is infested with Worgen Stalkers and once again you want to take them out nice and quickly and then a Commander Worgen appears. Now she actually has some ability, she'll periodically jump away from you and start shooting explosive rounds at you. It is then your job to go into melee range of her and when you do that she'll stop firing these explosive rounds. This is a pretty nice touch because it actually takes advantage of you know fighting on a ship and using all of the different levels so she's jumping away and you've got to chase after her and it's actually nice because all the other mobs you might as well be fighting them anywhere else out in the world because you don't really take advantage of the fact that you're actually on a ship. Now after finishing her off you go straight for the jugular and go and attack the alliance gunship Skyfire. You take some volatile flares with you to help blow up the ship from the inside. What you need to do is storm the ship taking out all of the alliance guards as you go. 
Now, the mobs have a bit of a habit of stunning you for a couple of seconds, which is pretty irritating if there's just one of them. However, if you pull too many, you can easily be overwhelmed and you'll just get constantly stun locked and it's a right pain in the ass. So do be careful if you're going to multi-pull. During the time that you are storming the ship, you are also placing the volatile flares near the ammunition to make it so the cannons will explode back into their faces. So make sure that you place these down as you're clearing out each level of the ship. After taking out two floors of Alliance troops and placing the flares, then you go upstairs with Nathanos Brightcaller to take out King Greymane, who is the leader of the Worgen. You take out his troop of guards who stun lock you a lot. There's like, you pull one of them and they all attack you and they just stun you forever. It's horrible. And then you actually start the mighty battle against Greymane himself. Now, Greymane isn't too difficult to deal with. He can stun you as well as slow your attack speed, which is a little bit annoying. But once he gets to 50% HP, he goes full Worgen mode and doesn't really do much more. I mean, he can apply a dot now, which doesn't really do too much damage, and he kind of stops stunning you, so it becomes easier when he turns into a Worgen, which doesn't really make too much sense. It'll be awesome if he had some more mechanics, so maybe you have to move out of some void zones because he's going to jump on them and start mauling you or something. It really feels like you're not fighting a Worgen, you might as well be fighting a boar at this point. So hopefully they tart him up a little bit. Now after getting him to around 10% HP, he does something amazing. He'll knock you down and then fly away. Like, just zooms off into the distance levels of flying away. It's a little bit weird. Then the screen fades to black and it has a little placeholder message saying that there will be a cinematic of the sky fire flying away in flames, shaking from explosions. Then the scenario is over. You will wake up after being rezzed by the undead and you'll see the damage that the Alliance has done to the fleet and you are informed that they can't find Sylvanas. From here, the quest chain into Stormheim begins. So that's how it goes down for the Horde. Let's have a little look at the Alliance. The Alliance starts up the exact same way by picking Stormheim from the adventure map straight after completing the artifact quest chain. The tooltip tells you that King Greymane is also looking for the Aegis and is going to take the Skyfire to Stormheim to locate it. You accept the quest and go meet Sky Admiral Rogers, who is the commander of the Skyfire. She gives you a letter, and this letter is from Varian Rin. He tells you that the Skyfire is about to go on a mission and that you need to go. You take the portal and arrive in Stormwind aboard the Skyfire. Very similar to how the Horde version works, you talk to Rogers and she is also supposed to like walk you around the ship and you're supposed to inspect it before you go away, but that isn't working just yet, so she just stands there and talks to you. Now she actually has some interesting things to say. She tells you that the SI-7 agents in Kalimdor have seen an increased presence of forsaken warships and that three days ago they left to go to the Broken Shore. They suspect that Sylvanas is upon them. It is our mission to intercept the fleet and destroy the Horde. You give in the quest and you take the cue for the scenario. When you zone in on the scenario, you find yourself on the Skyfire, hovering just above the bay. There is a placeholder message letting you know that there's supposed to be an intro cinematic of the Skyfire unloading a volley onto the fleet just from above the clouds. But once again, that's not in just yet. You are told to man the cannons and get ready to shoot down some bats. Oh God. But luckily this time, it isn't too awful. The cannons on the Skyfire are actually good and it is so much easier to see the bats because there isn't too many griffins flying about. And you also have this nice rapid fire mode, which is quite nice. But the main thing is, is that you shoot in a straight line rather than a curved arc. So it actually makes it so you shooting down the uh, bats is a hell of a lot easier. Now, on occasion, an undead death knight will appear and freeze the cannons. So just like in the Horde version, you need to jump out of the cannons, kill him off so you can continue taking out the 30 bats. He doesn't do too much and he does die pretty quick, so he's more of like a nuisance more than anything else. Now, after taking down 30 bats, you are told to head below decks to get a parachute to storm the ships to find Sylvanas. As you're running down all of the stairs to get to the back of the Skyfire to grab your parachute, loads of mobs are talking to you saying, oh, we'll be at your back, we're ready to fight with you. And it's a nice little touch and you've got these arrows telling you where to go. It actually feels like you are preparing to like, parachute down and take everything out and that's what you do you grab a parachute and after a lovely flight down you land on the banshee's whale now this ship was way harder to clear out than any of the horde versions that i had to do but i there's a couple of reasons for that i kind of aggroed the whole ship because they weren't fighting for some reason the alliance and the horde they were kind of standing next to each other so I just pulled them and all the mobs aggroed onto me, which was pretty horrible. My character is a few levels higher, so these mobs are scaled up and I have really, really bad gear for my level. So 
I did actually nearly die, but we managed to take them out in time. And then you are told to keep searching all the ships as you are trying to find Sylvanas. So what you do is that you get on a griffin and jump over to the next ship, which is the Black Rose. This time I actually waited for them to start fighting before I pulled anything, which was a good idea because this one was a hell of a lot easier. After taking out all the little cannon fodder, we actually fought the big captain on this ship. And the captain on this ship can actually empower the cauldrons on the ship to start spraying out green shit all over the place, which is pretty cool, but is very, very easy to avoid. After this, once again, you're still looking for Sylvanas, so you go straight to the Windrunner, which is Sylvanas' personal battleship. You kill the royal guards and then take out the captain. Just before you kill the captain, though, you are stopped as you want to get more information from her. She tells you that Sylvanas is gone and that the Skyfire is doomed. You very, very quickly mount a griffin so you can get straight back to the Skyfire and try and repel the horde on there. When you get there, you find the whole place aflame from the flares as well as several forsaken enemies plundering the ship. What you need to do is throw flares overboard and kill as many forsaken as you can. These forsaken mobs were a hell of a lot easier to kill. They did have like some bat like friends with them and they placed down smoke bombs. But as like a melee class, which survival hunters are now, as a melee class, the smoke bombs didn't really do anything and they were pretty easy to kill. So once you've done enough of this, you are told that it is too late. The sky fire is completely fucked and that you need to go upstairs to help Greymane on the top deck. You find him and Nathanos bright cooler in battle and you need to help take out Nathanos. Now, Nathanos, once again, he actually doesn't really do too much. What he does, he does like a little barrage that places green shit all over the place that you need to step out of, but it's very, very easy to avoid and there's nothing really too much to worry about. Greymane will then go full Worgen mode as they fight it out. And when you get Nathanos to 3%, guess what Greymane does? That's right. Greymane just flies off again. Like, I, th <laughs> I just don't understand what he's doing. But yeah, Greymane decides that he's had enough and he flies away. When this happened, the screen fades out and then it tells you that an outro cinematic of the Skyfire flying away in flames, shaking from explosions will be here soon. You wake up in an Alliance camp surrounded by the wreckage of the Skyfire and there you start the quest chain into Stormheim. So that's what you can expect to see when doing the intro scenarios into Stormheim. I thought they were pretty cool, like having a big old battle between the Alliance and the Horde, and although I have absolutely no idea why we're fighting, it still didn't really stop the whole set piece from really feeling quite cool. One thing that this could really do without, in my opinion, is the cannon sequences. The Alliance one is okay because you know your cannons aren't fucking awful, but the Horde one is just unbearable and it really really does need some work but we are in early alpha i expect things not to work flawlessly and i'm surprised how well it's working in the first place also i love the idea of having these two versions of like the same scenario but they're kind of linked with one another so like as the horde you're repelling the alliance off of the ships and sabotaging the skyfire and as the alliance you parachute onto the ships to like muck up the horde and then you go back to try and salvage what is left of the Skyfire to try and keep it afloat. I still have no idea what Greymane is doing uh, when he gets bored and charges off into the distance at high speed. Um, I assume maybe he's just supposed to like maybe jump overboard and then you've got like a whole quest chain as the Alliance trying to find him or something. Um, I assume they're actually going to iron this out. And the thing is, I really, really hope they don't because it was one of the funniest things I've seen in this game in a long time. You may have noticed as well that I did complain a little bit maybe about the difficulty of this, but of course we do have to take into account that this is expected to be done by absolutely anyone that wants to level through Legion. So of course the difficulty can't be too high, but once again they can make it so there are avoidable mechanics that don't maybe punish you too hard and maybe give you a bonus if you avoid it. So maybe when you're fighting Greymane and you have to avoid his charge, if you avoid the charge you get a damage increase and if you don't avoid the charge then you just take a little bit of damage and it's not the end of the world. Maybe they could do some things like that to make it so it's a little bit more fun to play against. Because as I said, sometimes when you're fighting up against some of these really key characters to the lore, it feels like you're pretty much fighting a boar in Elwyn Forest. They don't really do anything. So maybe the introduction of not punishing but more rewarding mechanics when you're fighting these big lore characters could really add to the whole feel of the scenario. But that's it. Thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, then make sure to leave a like and share it with your friends, and we'll see you next time.